Hello and welcome to episode 5 of the Squadcast, the official podcast of Glasgow Warriors. My name is Craig Wright, thank you to everybody for tuning in so far, whether that's from the comfort of your own home, in the queue for Blink-182 tickets, or just generally finding out what's going on with life at Scottsdale. Flying solo again this week, as Murphy is still out with the rest of the squad in South Africa, preparing for this weekend's big match with the Emirates Lions in Johannesburg. Kickoff is at 3.05 on Saturday, live on Premier Sports. We'll be back in person with a, a warrior to be determined next week ahead of our home match against Benetton. Kickoff at 7.35 here at Scotson on Friday the 28th of October. But until then, we've got none other than Scotland star, Glasgow Warriors centre and general all-round good guy Sam Johnson to tide you over until next week. On with the show. Mr. Murphy Walker, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm very well. I'm enviously eyeing up your lunch, I'm not going to lie. Give us a little bit of a report on what's going on for the day. Yeah, Wilson had to intervene this week. We've got a wee bit of fajitas, some tatties and some nice salad on the side. When you say he had to intervene, is Wilson cooking? Is this? Um, no, he's, he's put forward his own kind of list for the week of what he wants for lunch. Um, he's kind of <laughs> taken control because Pump's kind of lost control. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get bumps on at some point to, yep. to decide. Um, we're joined by this week's guest. I know a man who I know is a, a keen listener of the Squadcast from chats we've had around the place. Otherwise known as sheer paranoia that he was an answer for a previous episode. Sammy Johnson, how are you? Good on you. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what that was, but I'm going to take it at face value. Thank you very much. Uh, how are you? Doing all right? Yeah, sweet as. Um... Lovely weather, Murphy late as per usual, and and looking forward to being on the show this week. I don't know whether it was the show or the food that you're you're eyeing up. You were you were on your own lunch on the way in as well. It was the same deal. What was lunch for yourself? Uh, <laughs> plug out Meadow Road. Um, just a nice little uh, avocado and chicken sandwich. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Health. Health indeed. Not so, like Sammy. Previous uh, previous episodes, I know have gone down gone down well with yourself. Have you had a, have you had a favorite episode so far? Um, probably Ollie Smith's. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a few words the next day with, with him. Um, <laughs> ah, I just enjoyed it. See different people's perspectives and what they think of the joint. And uh, yeah, I'm a keen listener. The one, we, time. the one we should probably come back to is you, you were, you were name checked as somebody who doesn't make a coffee. How do you respond to that allegation? <clears throat> if someone's going to offer to do something, are you going to say no and do it yourself? Like, I just think that's fake news. Fake um, news. Works smarter. I'm a I'm a consistent in the um, a consistent member in that kitchen, so I'd have two or three myself before the day starts. So, I mean, any time that someone comes in and says anyone anyone want a coffee, I'm going to say yes. There you have it, listeners. We've got both sides of the same story. We give you a lot of things that your usual gossip magazines don't. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, refreshing everybody's mindset for the squad cast in front of Murphy and Sammy is our squadcast hat uh, we're back to the baseball cap this week uh, in that hat are different scenarios on the aforementioned scraps of paper your job sammy is to pick them out read them out and make sure the listeners are suitably entertained should we hit it shall we hit it go for it what we got the first one first teammate you'd share good news with um first teammate i'd share good news with would be ali price uh, yeah, he's just a good mate of mine. Um, I don't have many friends, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I would consider him one of them. Uh, and and yeah, that's pretty much sums up that story. Would he feel the same way about yourself? Or um, I think so. I think yeah. No, I that's know. Not much yeah. to say there. No, I think he would. What was the last thing you shared with him? Um, within reason. <laughs> oh, it's tough when you get put on the spot. I'm not too sure. D- probably just general chit chat. Um, nothing, nothing to share on the podcast, I suppose. Fair enough. Yeah. And in other words, so would the the good news include, for example, when you got your your dog, who was the first person you told that you had your your four legged friend? Uh, no, we had a we had a games night at our flat with a few people and. Uh, we announced as if we were having a baby. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we said, uh, we've got some news to share. We get, we're having a baby bulldog. So, <laughs> um, yeah, we Franklin. So, had to be there. Yeah, had to be there. Had to be there. Um, it was more for the games night. Nice. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for the invite. 
Uh, I, was, I was about to ask, were you there? <laughs> no. no. Young team. I'm not, not in that category. You still fit in the bracket, I'd say. Maybe looks and maturity wise. Um, <laughs> yeah. But in terms of actually getting invited anyway, I don't I don't get invited, so that's okay. Nice. Well, we've got your pipes and pipe and slippers in the background. Is this is this where you're at these days? I just enjoy coming to work and going home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note. Number two. Number two. Murphy, Number two. Sammy, one of you. Ooh, go on, Sam. Oh, you, go. you meant to pick someone. No, I don't. Fine on, fine on. You're okay. You these are great. <laughs> who, who, who came up with these questions? That would be me, yeah. Craig. It's, a, it's an amalgamation of Thoughts about six or seven. Xander said it was great. Yeah, it's fine. You can read it easy. <laughs> I've heard, basically, which coach are you going on a night out with? Nigel Carroll and easily. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's, um, well, he's the backs coach and the attack coach, but... I reckon he's good crack on a night out, so, um, yeah, Nigel. Talking from experience or? No, I don't think so. I don't think we've really had a chance. We we don't really get a chance to go out very often. We had a um, couple of quiets after the weekend. Were you there? I uh, was there. You were there, yeah. I was there. Um, but, no, we haven't had a, a chance to have any team management socials. So yeah. what, what, makes, what makes Nigel a, a prime target for yourself for, for a night out? What's the... Um, I think we have similar personalities. We just enjoy having a good time and, and you know, when it's keep to yourself and a beer in a hand and a little yarn here and there, it's it's nice. Yeah, I like it. Nice. It, it kind of backs up my, my theory that Bax will choose their backs coach and Murphy will choose Dicko for, <laughs> for, for everything. I've never seen Dicko on a night out, so... Nigel's a strong contender. Nigel, would you, would you um, also go with I've that? I've heard, well, actually saying that, I've heard great stories about Pete Murch. Um, Protect the king. Yeah, exactly. Um, mainly from his ex-teammate Ed Kalman, who used to be in my school oh, coach. Right, yeah. I've had many uh, stories that I cannot repeat, but um, yeah, either March or Nige is top two contenders in my opinion. None of you, Frank. None of you fancy going on with uh, with Franco. Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll have a cheers to a gl- uh, glass of whiskey, eh? <laughs> yep. Yeah. We dram. Yeah. Ah, worst things to have on it. Yep. Know. True. Yes. All right, round three. Next. Cracking on. Yeah. Oh, which teammate, past or present, has had the biggest influence on you? No, we're going serious with this one. But um, position Pacific, I would always look up to probably two people. So um, Pete Horn, who's my coach now, um, just because we're the same position – um, and he was sort of there just before I was <clears throat> playing 12 and then we played a lot together actually at 10 and 12 and just had a really good combination and, you know, he was really easy to talk to and about things. And then the second person I probably um, had a big influence for me was Alex Dunbar uh, for the same sort of reason. Um, you know, they're both probably a bit contrast in the way that they play and then I try and fit myself probably in between the two of them. So... We played a few times at 12 and 13 and, and I just really enjoyed um, having someone with his experience outside of me and and his know-how. So, yeah, they're probably the two that have had the biggest influence on me here at Glasgow. Yeah. Obviously, you came here 2015? 2015, yep. Was it was it obvious straight away that, that Pete and Alex were the, the two that were going to have the, the influence on you or were you taking your time to settle into the squad at that point? Um, well, I didn't talk to anyone for a good six months when I moved here, so... I didn't really know what the crack was. Um, I had no concept of Northern Hemisphere rugby. I didn't know what anything was. Uh, I never left home. I was just this little bogan from Ipswich that came over here and didn't know have any social skills. So it's taken me a long time to sort of develop that. And and then once I sort of started developing that, they yeah, they were the two main influences I had. Is Pete still the same sort of? Influence now he's a, a coach than he was when you were, you were playing with him? Yeah, I mean, I go up to Pete a fair bit and chat to him just in general about the game and get his thoughts and ideas and things like that. But I think there's also that approach where he's now a coach, so you've got to be a little bit more professional and and yeah. realise what the relationship is now. Yeah. Murphy, have you, obviously you've mentioned Ed Kalman already. Yeah. Is there anybody in particular that's been, been an influence? School-wise, yeah. would have been him. Yeah. Um, been in similar positions, whatnot, and he's uh, he's quite an interesting character, as m- much of the old boys here would tell you. <laughs> um, now, I think 
when I first joined Petrus Duplessis, he was a big influence in terms of how I play and how I scrum. Um, yeah, I don't know who it would be now. Kind of, you know, be your own man. Fair enough. Um, how are you co-host, honestly? Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> Pick the bottom of the barrel. Oh, man, I would have said until last week that it would have been Xander, but I feel like if you two are still talking, we're okay. <laughs> yeah, he's, Zen, he's, no, he's, Zen he's, would be even worse co-host. <laughs> anyway, next question. Next Crack one. on. Sorry, bro. I don't mean to... <laughs> <laughs> Hardest working teammate, <laughs> obviously me. Um, <laughs> okay, for the sake of the podcast, not yourself. Okay, it's definitely not Sam. Just for the listeners, <laughs> to know that. Uh, you two could sell uh, this one later. It's on. working smart, not hard, isn't it, Murph? Uh, yeah, you've yeah you've battled your case hard for that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Hardest working teammate. Oh. Can, we, can I have context? Can you give me some context, hosts, on oh, like you can, you what can, sort of department? Like, you can take take it whatever way you on want. On pitch can, during yeah. games, yeah. first one. So like on pitch, the hardest working is goal in terms of his Bronco time, in terms of he's just everywhere. Like, yeah. What about in a game though? Like a goal as well. George Jordan for everybody. Yeah. Tom Gordon. Tom Gordon. Um, he he's up there. He's just off the back fence whenever he can do it. Um. Cole Forbes at the back, he's been outstanding these yeah. first few weeks. He's just running around like no tomorrow, catching everything. Um, so that will probably be on the field, in the gym. Yeah, your place of excellence. I was going to say, I, I don't really know because I'm only in there for five <laughs> minutes. Um, One repping out. Oh. It's a cracking rep though, to be fair. I hit a PB in my squat. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What was um, it? What's your, what's your squat? Go on, fire out. Put, put it into context that humble brag. I've have, it's like, I've we go. probably been three years that I've actually been gymming. So I did 170 kilo squat. Um, That's more than what I thought it was going to be, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, I was about to light you up there for I don't know. Kyle's across. good in the gym. Kyle, yeah. Yeah, but he's good just natural. I would like all around, not naturally, because he work, He just works hard. Yeah. Um, anything else department wise? What about off field? Who, who's the one that does the, the most sort of non rugby specific so whether it's i know you guys have got the the clans in here whether there's anything charity wise or community wise who's the well, who's the first to put their hands up there well, we've got our clans north yep. south east west i think that's going to be coming out in more detail indeed in yeah. the future stay tuned listeners um someone that enjoys to get their hands on and in and around the community um, richie used to be big for that yeah, still is yeah yeah richie i'm just richie. trying to think of my clan yeah um, who are you? What kind? North. Oh, shame. Um, <laughs> I don't know who's the head of of it. Scotty Cummins is the head of uh, East. No, 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 I mean for community. All oh, right. Um, Someone in probably more of a social context that does a lot of work behind the scenes is Jamie Batty. Yeah. And his beautiful fiance Sophie um, do a lot of things. They got a lot of connections. Okay. Uh, in and around that sort of scene. So I'd say behind the scenes, the Wombat does a fair bit of work. Uh, so, yeah, I've, there's a few boys that enjoy getting their hands in and around the community. What sort of stuff are we talking for, for Jamie? Um, mainly social events. Okay. Um, Anything that involves eating, drinking, getting to know each other. Yeah, but like it's better than just going to the same place all the time. You Correct. know what I mean? Yeah, so well done, Jamie. Organised a great one. Couple of weekends ago, at the big feed, plug, which was good fun. I unfortunately, was un- un- unable to yeah, attend. Sammy decided not to show up, but everybody no. else had great fun. <laughs> I had prior commitments. <laughs> I had to leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next question. Next one up, Sammy. Mix it up. You've gone through about half of them already, anyway. Nah, you're racing through them today, to be fair. Who is the most fine teammate and why? Matt Fagg, because he's about as sharp as a bowling ball. <laughs> um, and and the ick, he is an ick. Honestly, you look at the definition of ick, Matt, Matt Fagg. Because um, he just, he's never wrong. He's never wrong. I like him. I, could, I like him. I don't know why I like him. <laughs> but he is um, the most fine teammate just because he's late. He forgets things. We've gone away from the fine system, though. I think uh, we'll, come, we'll come back to it. It can get a bit tedious in terms of, like, 
just little things and then yeah. like when you when you're giving out money or doing the the funnies yeah roll the dice stuff it it can hurt the hip pocket yeah but we were saying it's kind of a hard role to fill with Rob being the fines master last year mm. there's nobody really that's stepping up into his shoes because they're such big shoes to fill well there's a lot of different departments that we're probably going down different routes yeah. these days um, with the clans with the leadership with the X, X Y and Z so uh, yeah there's not too much else <laughs> Any more questions? Should I just keep rolling? Yeah, them quick, out? keep keep rolling. Quick fire. You have to call one teammate. If they don't pick up, you win a million. Who are you calling? Well, no, I feel like there might be a few candidates here. No one, but a few people have been saying. Am I calling them? Yeah, you're calling. Yeah, you're making well, the then, call. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna think. Who <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Um, who's not gonna pick up? Depending on what mood demo's in. May not pick up. Um, I don't know. It's a tough one because I don't really, I don't really yeah. talk to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> not in a bad way. Like, unless you need something. Like, how many yeah. times do you ring someone? Not to, often. Not often. Um, I think, yeah. Like, people with kids obviously naturally may not pick up yeah. straight away. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah. Uh, that's a, that's I reckon Richie, Phone Richie, he's always busy doing something. He was moving his garage the other day. Was he? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, i got a good relationship with Suave, yeah. I feel. Maybe he just doesn't pick up for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is one where I feel like if you, if you were going to call somebody, you'd make a prior arrangement and try and split the money with them. Like if I was going to try oh, and call somebody. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's yeah. a mill. Yeah. Oh, that's, so a, that's a bit tactical. That's, that's tactical. So I'd, I'd call oh, you, so but I'd let you know first. Uh, yeah, but like right now, if you had to make, do an offer him right now, Nobody knows. Shall I call someone right now and see if they pick up? <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> who am I ringing? Well, who do you think I wouldn't pick up? Who's your first? Who's your first call on? Pricey's your best mate, so he'll he'll pick up. No, surely. Actually, you know what? He because he's quite. He's a busy always person. on his phone though. He doesn't reply to me that quick. I'll, I'll I'll ring him. I'll see if he picks up. Am I am I loudspeaker? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, go yeah, loudspeaker. Uh, Craig's offering a million here, so uh, it's coming out of any other. This budget is a apart test of. Tension is palpable in the room. Yeah. How's it? Uh. Cool. <laughs> Guess what? We've just won a million dollars. What do you mean? I'm on the I'm on the squad cast, and I'm on the squad cast, and I had to ring someone for a million dollars, and and you're the winner. Oh, brilliant! Thank you. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye bye bye. Bye bye. Is it not if they don't pick up you in a million dollars? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and well, there it is. There right. it is. Never mind. That sounds cookie crumbles. Nice, Sammy. <laughs> Next. Or are we done? Hell I was going to say, you've got five minutes until you're oh, yeah. so Last one, Sammy. Last one. Make it a big good one. I don't know whether I've been cringe this interview or if I've like actually tried to bring a bit of life to it. Well, the listeners judge, not us. Yeah. We'll, te- we'll tell you by the way. You had Xander figures. before this, so... Who's listening? I know I'm listening. I know Stu Dow listens because yeah. we were chatting about it this morning. Craig knows the numbers. Yeah. What's the numbers well, looking like? Well, social media following of 88,000, so... What, yeah, but how many people percent, actually are, living, are listening to the podcast? Many, many thousands. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Best and worst hairstyle in the squad. Mm. I'm going to see if you picked the same as me. Have you done this one? Yeah. I should know then, shouldn't I? Yep. Ferg's got the worst. <laughs> yes, that's exactly. <laughs> that what you yeah, said? that's what I said. He said he's going to come <laughs> after me. Not, <laughs> not through, not through choice no, though. Uh, yeah, genetically. Yeah. Um, the best. Mm. There's a few contenders for the best, I reckon. Can you rattle some out, and I'll say a few. Sheba's always sharp when he gets yeah, one done. Yeah, sharp. Um, I thought Beast G, George, has recent mullet. Pretty tidy. Okay. Um, if you say so. <laughs> I'm trying to think of others. No, we said. Well, uh, Ali, because he gets one every second day. True. Short back and sides. <laughs> um, Stano, same boat. Yep. Sione, same boat. Gregor Brown, exactly Gregor same. Gregor Brown. Um, oh, you know what? I really like Rory Dodge. He's just a beautiful human being. Well, we were 
talking Very about this. Have you pleasing. seen him? Have you seen him before his like long hair phase? No. He was skinhead phase. True. So. Oh, that's right. And he looked like he was real intimidating. Or something yeah. Like. He looked like a convict. Yeah. Honestly, I'm the. I'm Just a star listener. listener so. All right. Who's your one? Who's your? Who's your? Best. Who's, your, who's the one best? Yeah. Your big finale. Um. Current best. Current best. Um, Sione. I just Sorry. like it. Like, I... solid joke. Yeah, I just like it. Nice. And on that note, we will call an end. Thank you very much for your time today, Mr. Johnson. Thanks for having me. Hope everything goes well in Murphy. Until next time, whenever Thanks. that may be. Yeah. Keep me posted. Indeed. I've been Craig Wright. He's been Sam Johnson. He's been Murphy Walker. And this has been the Glasgow Warriors Squadcast. Thank you.